So now we have the key words. We have the words that make erosion, we have the words that make transportation, and we have the words that make deposition. The next thing to kind of look at is how is it that a river changes? For example, if you go near the mouth, the river is moving very slowly, tends to be very wide. Well, we know it gets a lot of tributaries and confluences and loads of other rivers joining it, but why is it going slower? Also, at the source, why is it that the water is travelling a lot quicker? To be able to answer this question, you need to be able to imagine that you can cut the side of the hill in half, from the source to the mouth. And if you're able to cut in half and then squeeze it so we can see it onto one page, you will notice that a river is divided into three parts, the upper course, the middle course and the lower course. We call this the long profile of a river. Upper course is where the source is and because it tends to be in a mountain range, the water tends to be travelling faster, it has more force, there is a lot more erosion. We will see a lot more waterfalls and you will see a lot more rapids and a lot more V-shaped valleys which we'll explain later on. We then have the middle course. This is where it's starting to, the angle is not quite as steep and there are a lot more rivers coming together and so the flow is starting to slow down, but it's still going downhill and you will still see rapids, waterfalls, but you might also start to see some meanders and some floodplains starting to appear. By the lower course, this is where the land is starting to level out. As the land starts to level out, so it doesn't have the same amount of energy. Because it hasn't got the same amount of energy, it starts to deposit a lot more soil and this affects the route the river takes, causing oxbow lakes, floodplains, delta, 